excitement, anticipation, hope. It's the beginning of a new day that will provide hope for thousands of homebound elderly and disabled residents of Tarrant County. Meals on Wheels of Tarrant County provides nearly 1 million nutritious meals each year to more than 4,800 clients who are unable to prepare meals for themselves and have no one to help them. Over 5,700 volunteers give up their lunch hour just one day per week to ensure that those in need receive a hot, nutritious meal and a warm and caring smile. Meals on Wheels of Tarrant County would not exist without generous people in the community who give their time and personal resources to improve the lives of our homebound neighbors, allowing them to remain living independently in their own homes, surrounded by a lifetime of memories. Because our clients depend on us and in order to meet the needs of the homebound elderly and disabled residents of Tarrant County, for many years to come, we are building for the future. This is an exciting day and time for us to be building our new building and looking forward to moving into the new facility. Um, here it is in 2015. We started this project in 2010. Thought we would really be through by 2012 or 2013, so it's really taken longer than we anticipated. Um, so I'm excited that when, we, when you open this time capsule in 2073 and have an opportunity to look back and see what people look like and what we wore and what our uh, makeup look like and hairstyles, I know that you're all going to be just dying laughing. Obviously when I started 41 years ago I never dreamed that I would still be here, um, but it became a passion of mine early on and the changes that I have been privileged to have witnessed have just been amazing uh, from just a few hundred people. Um, actually less than a hundred people when I came to now we serve a close to 24, 2500 people a day um, close to 4,000 meals a day um, plus we have all of these other programs that we certainly didn't have early on but I think that the 11 churches that started Meals on Wheels built a very strong foundation if it's almost like they wrote the Constitution and they had it based in the community. They had the volunteer base. They had the community support. And their mission was to keep people in their homes. And I can, I can really say 42 years later, the agency still has that. Well, the, the way I got started um, was a little under 30 years ago. And I uh, was going to give up pizza for Lent and my wife, said, you're too disciplined, that's too easy for you, why don't you do something instead? And I go, what should I do? She goes, well, I just heard an ad for volunteers for Meals on Wheels. And I said, I don't even know what that is. And she goes, well, they deliver meals to the elderly to help them keep them in their homes. I'm like, oh, I can do that. And at the time, I would think I was the vice president of a bank here in Fort Worth. And um, so I met Nidra way back when and um, went through the class, picked up a route, and uh, really have continued on. It's the longest Lenten resolution in all of mankind, I think. But uh, anyway, so it's been close to 30 years now. You know, let's come up with this crazy idea, but it, it's a basic thing like feeding somebody. Um, and I think a lot of folks, um, and, and certainly for me personally, you know, I see these, especially the, the elderly that we're taking care of, and I think, you know, that could be my grandparents. And I would want to make sure that somebody was taking care of them if they couldn't feed themselves or if they couldn't take care of themselves. Um, just knowing that somebody's kind of looking out for them. Um, and so I think definitely a testament to just the folks that are in this area. And I think um, hopefully with, with some of the, um, you know, the, the religious starts, um, and I know it's been a mixture of different denominations and um, you know not just Christian but I think also some um, synagogues and some other some other um, people of faith um, I think that um, basically the focus again is on people and that people are important and it's important that we take care of them and, and with such a basic need as feeding them it's not again it's not this kind of crazy you know let's go do this you know wild and wacky thing but it's let's meet one of their basic needs and being able to make sure that they can stay at home and, and continue to live their lives at home and where they're comfortable and
you know, where their community is. Whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Well, I think that's pretty much what Jesus said um, when he was saying, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, whenever you've done this to the least of these, you've done it to me. I remember that we looked at all sorts of options um, and really thought about how unique of an organization Meals on Wheels is and it um, wouldn't have been as easy just to retrofit a building um, and just kind of making it fit. Um, and so we as a board decided, hey, let's go out and raise the money. Let's have a brand new facility that we can design the way that we need it to um, help staff, the way that it can make it easy for volunteers to pick up meals, a kitchen that's state of the art, but that gives us the flexibility to add on and be able to provide more meals if we get to that point. So um, we as a board decided that it was important that we go out and use our resources and make those connections to be able to raise the money, but, but to also be involved in actually designing the building in a way that it would service Meals on Wheels um, staff and volunteers and ultimately clients. Um, and I think what, what we've done is again being good stewards of our resources. Um, we certainly could have come up with a you know hundred million dollar building and it would have been fantastic. Raising the money would have been a different uh, issue but in terms of what we felt confident we could raise the money for in a building that would certainly serve those needs and give us um, right off the bat um, the kind of storage that we need, the kind of you know office space, um, conference rooms and that sort of thing for special events that we hold. Um, so hopefully that'll meet the needs um, and then there's a ability for um, expansion and, and for um, you know additional services and if we need to kind of tack on some additional space um, but hopefully this building will serve uh, Meals on Wheels well and, and help us to continue feeding clients. When the board decided to build a new building and they looked to, to me and to Carla Judson, our president and CEO and said y'all can raise 12.75 million dollars can't you and we kind of looked at each other and said hmm, I don't know about that but we knew that we had to do it, so it didn't matter what we thought or what the board thought, we knew we had to do it. Um, the interesting part was we went to several different foundation executives and met with them to see what they thought about it and kind of get them thinking about how they might support the project. And, and the first one we went to was Val Wilkie Jr. from the uh, Sid Richardson Foundation. And he was very encouraging and said, you know, you girls can do anything. You know you need it, go for it. And then we went to a few others who said, oh my, that's too big a budget. There's no way you can do that. Carla and I are not ones to really pay attention to what other people say when we know we can do something. And we already had it in our mind that we could do the 12.75 million. So we convinced our board to let us move forward with the project and try to raise the money. We looked at existing buildings all over Tarrant County. We hired a, uh, a realtor to help us who had been uh, a big donor in the past and had helped us with this existing building. Um, and Steve, had, uh, we looked at every existing building that was available uh, to see if we could retrofit it, to see if it was going to work um, geographically, and uh, just every aspect. And we finally came to the conclusion, it was really primarily to the kitchen, requirements that we could not retrofit any building that was going to fit what we needed. We tried to do that here and it's really been a, a demanding <laughs> task. So we, um, we then started to look for uh, raw land. Okay, And while we were doing that uh, we happened to look at a building on 121 and we thought well this might work and then Carla actually looked over a couple lots over and there was some raw land there with a building on it that was uh, existing business and uh, she goes, I wonder if that one's available. And Carl and I were standing there and we noticed a property next door that had actually a, a store on the front of the property and horses on the back of the property. So we thought, well, I wonder who owns that piece of property and if it might be for sale because it was larger than the seven acres we were looking at. So we came back to the office and found out that actually um, Judy Smith of Lawn Smith Roofing owned that piece of property and Mrs. Smith and her uh, late husband had been very good donors to Mills on Wheels. 
So we approached Mrs. Smith and asked her about that property. And she said that, that she really wanted to be a part of this project. She could not donate the land to us because it was in a trust for her daughter, but she could make us a very good deal on the property. And so we bought it for far less than it was registered on the uh, Tarrant County tax rolls at the time. Well, first of all, my husband is going be looking down on us as though he's so pleased that this is what happened with the land that he had bought many many years ago and that it's Meals on Wheels building is being built there and so he's going to be very pleased that the less fortunate people are getting the value of this because he was one of those very less fortunate people as he grew up on the east side of Fort Worth. remember as a little girl that my mom did it through our local church and so she and her friends got together and cooked meals and then they then delivered um, out in the community and so that kind of stuck with me and then I think I heard an advertisement and this was probably gosh I think I've been a volunteer now about 13 or 14 years um, I started very young um, but um, it kind of stuck with me and I thought well that's an organization that you know I can spend my lunch break um, you know and I, I've been a substitute driver so it wasn't a regular route but um, I could fill in um, kind of certain days when it worked with my schedule um, and so that's kind of how I started getting involved and went out as a substitute driver and, and delivered meals and I think um, having that um, client who is so grateful for just something as simple as a meal but the fact that you're there checking on them you're making sure that all is well everything's okay in their house you know there's not a safety hazard you don't have a client that's on the floor that you know some kind of medical condition or, or something that's happened um, and so just as I've continued to be involved as a volunteer and as a board member um, being on the board has given me an opportunity um, just to, again, serve the, ultimately the client, um, but to be able to be involved in decision making and, again, making sure that we're being good stewards of our resources and making sound decisions um, that really benefit ultimately the client. So um, I've been excited to continue delivering meals and to be a board member and, and now to serve as chairman of the board. Um, and I think it's a fantastic organization and I love every minute of it and I love um, certainly the, the client piece of it and feeling like I can kind of take care of some folks in the, in the local community. So. There's two clients that we did roofs for and roof repairs for and they both touched my heart greatly. The first one was named Miss Betty and she was just the dearest woman and uh, she commented on uh, how small I was and of course she was same size I was. The second one was the uh, lady that lived in a trailer and we went and redid uh, the roof of her trailer and when I went there she commented on how much it had cooled off her trailer and how she had no idea that that was going to make that much difference of having her roof redone on her trailer and how much it would cool off her trailer and how thankful she was for that. Well, that that is a great memory. The day that we went to tell her that she was the winner and um, Keith Harrison and I went together and she didn't know who I was. She just thought I was another member of Meals on Wheels. And so when we walked in the door and Keith introduced me as Judy and then finally she put together that I was Judy Smith from Lon Smith Roofing and she was just overwhelmed that I had come there to speak to her and one of the really unique things that happened during the process of roofing her house was the roofing crew that went there was not able to roof it in one day because the roof was in such poor condition that we had to uh, put new um, decking on the house and so uh, as he was getting ready to leave for the day he started loading up the shingles and she said what are you doing she said you can't take my shingles and he said well it's not safe for me to leave them here and she's well you're not taking my shingles and he said well I could maybe put them on the roof and she said no you're bringing them inside my house and was afraid that the floor was going to collapse with all those shingles stacked inside her house but she wasn't letting her shingles get away from her. 
Well, it was part of my outreach, I think, because I was the congregational care person for a 2,000 member church. And we had programs that trained people to be caregivers in our church, this uh, Stephen ministry, which ours was the first church in our county that, that became um, involved in Stephen ministry. And so it kind of just bailed in together and worked, worked together. And, and, uh, right now, since I'm kind of disabled, my uh, son is going with me. I have pretty much devoted my life to nonprofits. Um, I haven't worked for a for-profit since I was in college. So, um, you know, I, I don't exactly know what it's like to just work for somebody to help make them rich, but many people who have come to work here have said, this is just so refreshing. I go home every day feeling like I've made a difference. Um, I'm not just making the rich man richer. I am really trying to enrich lives. I'm saving lives. It's my passion. Um, that's pretty pretty much the theme, I think, of almost everybody who works here. Uh, that it's not a job. Yes, it, they need a job. They need money. But they are doing it for other reasons. And uh, I bet that doesn't change. I wouldn't think so. You know, I... I and one of the things that I really want to get across is that it wasn't one person or two people or a hundred people. It was thousands of people through their commitment, volunteering, financial, leadership. Um, we have strong boards of directors, many strong committees. You know, the staff has just been phenomenal. Um, they go way above the call of duty and of course you know that they make very large salaries that's a joke um, <laughs> but you know they do it for another reason they do it because they really want to make a difference
looking forward to what a hundred years might bring. Obviously in, in the department that I work in, we are all about fundraising and marketing and telling our story and uh, one of the ways we do that is through special events and at our 40th anniversary we had a huge gala and it raised uh, you know a hundred thousand dollars and I can only imagine what a big event might be like at the hundredth anniversary where you spend a lot of time and effort sharing your story with the community and reminding them of of your past and your history and the the richness of the, the churches and the synagogue that founded this organization and try to continue to keep them involved um, as we did with the 40th anniversary. You know, those, those founding groups may not even be in existence, but some of them may still be going strong. And we hope that, that they are and that they're a part of that 100th anniversary. Um, I can't even imagine how many millions of meals or maybe a billion meals by 2073. I don't know, we're crossing over 19 million meals this year um, as we go through our, what, 42nd anniversary. So um, I would imagine that in 2073 there will be so many meals that have been served to the community and so many people that have been uh, recipients of those meals and so many volunteers that have helped deliver them and companies and individuals who've donated to the program to you know, make it as successful as, it, as I know it will be when that 100th anniversary rolls around. I think it's uh, going to be a great time of celebration and I hope that um, I probably won't be around but my children or my grandchildren are a part of that because it's been such a huge passion in my life that I hope it's something that they continue to, to uh, participate in. When you think about all of the all of the changes that have taken place just in terms of you know local transportation and volunteers picking up meals and getting them delivered to clients um, and thinking about maybe the way that we um, package the food or the type the, the type of food or the the needs of the clients and how those have changed over the years and I think even looking back 40 years to think from how we started to where we are now and the fact that we have a choice in meals so it's not just this is it take it or leave it but you can actually choose I want meal A I want meal B um, and that people really have a say in, in um, being able to kind of customize what they're interested in and what kind of food they want um, but I think um, I think what won't change um, is hopefully that human touch and the fact that we have volunteers that are out there checking on people making sure a meal is delivered so it'll be interesting Interesting to see if there's any kind of technology that changes how the actual food gets into the hands of the people who need it. Um, but hopefully we won't lose sight of the fact that the people are the most important piece of that and being able to keep that human touch. In a hundred years, I certainly see it larger than it is today. I see it probably offering additional services. Um, I think the needs of the client will be similar but probably have even greater as the population ages. Um, you know, when I'm trying to think out this many years, you know, when, when we're looking at this, it's, um, will everyone have cars that they can hover around and go as the back to the future kind of thing? Will we have those, uh, will we actually be delivering directly to their door or will we have another venue to do that? I don't know. I hope that we can still provide fresh, hot meals to the door. When this time capsule is opened, I hope whoever is looking at it will be able to imagine what it was like as we were building this building and why we built it. Well, I guess uh, this time capsule will be opened up in 58 years from now. And um, it'll be really interesting to see, uh, you know, where they're at with the program. Um, I guess for those maybe watching this video, um, there was a lot of hard work that went into this program. I'm sure you know that, and uh, and really into the thought of the building um, as to what you know what our needs are now. What are ours going to be in the next 10, 20 years, let alone 58 years? We hoped, we thought of everything, but who knows? There are some. Uh important people who played a significant role in, in the capital campaign. Uh, Val Wilkie is one who 
really gave us the confidence that we needed to move forward with the project. Um, at the time, he was the executive director of the Sid W. Richardson Foundation uh, here in Fort Worth. And um, shortly after we met with him, he retired, and we knew that he was going to retire, and he was replaced by Pete Guerin, who, you know, followed in his footsteps. We had to win him over, although we'd already won Val over. You know, we had to win Pete over as well and, and secure funding from him, but he's been very supportive of the project. The same with uh, John Robinson from the uh, Amon G. Carter Foundation. It took him a lot of, of information gathering to really believe in the project and know that it was going to be successful, but once we provided all the documentation he needed, he was on board with this as well. Um, probably the first person who really stood up and said, I want to be a part of this project was uh, Joe Montleon from the Morris Foundation and also Lee McConnell and John Ryan from the Ryan Foundation. So those were really key components uh, because once you get the buy-in of the major foundations in town, um, the others really want to be a part of the project as well because they know it's going to be successful. The Maybe Foundation from Tulsa, Oklahoma was a big player in this project. They provided a challenge grant, which we had to meet our original budgeted goal by a certain time frame to participate in their funding. Uh, the MS DOS Foundation, the Hoblet Cell Foundation, and there are many others who were really key players in this project, um, as well as some individuals that really stepped up and came through and helped us. and. We're so grateful for their support because we could not have been as successful without them. I think of all the foundations that gave money that bought off on our program. And really, what led a lot to this was really the success of the past. We had such a great reputation in the community that uh, people knew that, okay, these guys, they have their act together. Financially, they're sound. Um, it's a great program and it has a huge impact on Tarrant County. So I think a lot of the foundations saw that and said, yes, we'd like to be a part of it. And so as we progressed on, you know, they came back with more money. And uh, so the foundations came in, a lot of local individual donors came in. Um, we had some give quite a bit of money and some not so much, but to them it was a lot and to us it meant everything. County has the best people in the world. Um, you think of a program that has four to five thousand volunteers that show up every day, deliver 10, 12 meals maybe, but they do it like clockwork. And, and you think of that, there's other areas apart Texas and around the country, they either have to pay or they, they people are on waiting lists because they don't have people to deliver to them. Tarrant County really has never had that problem. There were so many um, volunteers among the large churches particularly in those days. And we had a lot of community projects. We had uh, council of churches. We had uh, 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 other uh, Alzheimer's Association. We had four or five different organizations that were serving the community in a, in a uh, very important way. You know, we did not start with any kind of federal dollars or city dollars, um, state dollars. It was started with money and volunteer effort from people who live here, from people who knew the individuals that were going to receive the meals, and from people who could see the, the need in the community. And one of the things that I'm most proud of at our 42nd anniversary that we're, we will celebrate in 2016 is that we have continued that strong um, relationship with the community and with our, with our faith-based community, although that's expanded far beyond the, the original founding groups. But, um, you know, that buy-in from the community is what makes us so successful.
We praise you, O God, for your faithfulness through the ages. You are with us as we greet the dawn of a new day. Your word guides us as we seek to be obedient servants. Be with us now during this time of fellowship and of decision making and into the future. Give us wise actions when we make decisions for service and promote the goals of Meals on Wheels Incorporated. Cause us, our Father, to be faithful to our promises and stand among all who desire to serve the people of our community. Amen. So on behalf of the Board of Directors in the year 2015, thank you for continuing the tradition of serving clients in Tarrant County and making sure that they can grow old in their own homes and have a nutritious meal and have a volunteer that looks in on them. And thank you for making Tarrant County a great place to grow old. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias por todo lo que hacen para nosotros. Thank you. Come on, we read a ojo, meals on wheel. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you!